Hi folks, today I would like to tell more about session hijacking techniques. First of all, let's have a look at this Python script. It uses Chrome local storage library and as you can see, script execute from debugging mode vulnerability. Here is the init command for debug mode. And after successfully connection, it just gets information from local storage of web browser, in our case, exact value of session key, and just print this value. Okay, fine. Let's check the second one. That runs from in debug mode, collects browser local storage with first script and sends it to my Telegram channel. I hide my token and chat ID, and as you can see, it receives one argument and send it text to me. In our case, session key itself is an argument. And let's get back to second script. Last row just kills the browser debug mode session. So let me log in in my web application as a regular user with login and password. And I will not turn on this switch, and it means that I won't like to save my current web session. Well, let's run set of scripts and try to hack this browser. I forced the delay to show you the execution of all steps of this script, and it's cracked. So. Let's refresh in our memory the key aspects of that kind of attack and as you can see the attacker should somehow catch login or password or the session key. As you remember I left this switch in off mode and now I will turn it on to force browser to save my session in local storage. And as you can see, here is it. And now I can easily use my web application between the sessions on the web browser without new authorization each time I open it. So, is it convenient? Definitely yes. Is it safe? Who knows? I think no. So, Let's execute our script one more time to hack this browser and get the session key for this web application. As you can see, it opened browser in debug mode, execute all steps and close browser debug mode window. And as you can see, there is a session key from our web browser local storage. Let's compare it with value in our browser. They are equal. And now we can access any protected data of the web application. Check my previous video to see how to do this. Uh, link will be in the description below. And a few words about this set of scripts. Uh, there is a simple example of working concept of malicious code. And it could be packed in any form and it can be written in many languages and it means that it can be executed on any kind of devices you use to access web applications. And of course, bad guys mask this malicious code like PDF files or images or something else. Uh, that's why be careful in your daily web browsing and protect your data. Goodbye.